reason is that Canadians across the country are growing increasingly alarmed by the violent crime wave impacting every major community and in rural communities across the country. Canadians are waking up every day to headlines of violent crime. C. Ensure that Canada's allowing to namely huh? A. Fix Canada's broken bail system by immediately repealing the elements enacted by Bill 75, an act to amend the Criminal Code, the Youth Criminal Justice Act, and other acts, and to make consequential amendments to other acts which force judges to release violent repeat offenders onto the streets, allowing to them to reoffend. B. Strengthen Canada's bail laws so that those who are prohibited from pro pro possessing firearms and who are then accused of serious firearms offense do not easily get bail. And C. The C. Ensure that Canada's justice system puts the rights of law abiding Canadians ahead of the rights of violent repeat offenders. The Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be splitting my time with the member from Fundy Royal. Mr. Speaker, there's two reasons that we're here today talking about bail reform and violent crime. The first reason is that Canadians across the country are growing increasingly alarmed by the violent crime wave impacting every major community and in rural communities across the country. Canadians are waking up every day to headlines of violent crime, police officers being murdered, people being murdered on public transit every single day. So that's why we're here. We hear their concerns and we're here to represent them and demand change. The second reason we're here today, Mr. Speaker, is to demand change from this Liberal government who has done absolutely nothing to address the violent crime surge in this country. They've taken no responsibility, they've made no commitments to Canadians that they're taking it seriously, that they'll do anything about it. They brought forward no new ideas of how to address the need for immediate bail reform in this country, to address the violent crime surge in this country, to address the repeat violent offenders that are being caught and released by police over and over and over again, and wreaking havoc on our communities on a daily basis. So that's why we're here today to talk about bail reform and crime for our Conservative Opposition Day motion, which you just outlined. And what I would say to Canadians is it's not just in their heads that violent crime is going up. It is going up. In fact, 32% in the last eight years under this Liberal Prime Minister. 32%. And more than that, gang murders have almost doubled. They've gone up 92% in the eight years that this Liberal Prime Minister has been at the helm. We've also seen, as I mentioned earlier, police officers are being murdered on the job, five in the last number of months, particularly over the holidays. We saw a young new constable in the Ontario Police, Greg Priscella, who was murdered by a violent repeat offender who was out on bail. He was shot and murdered by that man. That man also had a weapons prohibition order. He was deemed too dangerous to, to possess a firearm by our law system. And he, has a long, he had a long rap sheet of harming people in his community. This is a repeat violent offender, let out on bail, and then he murdered an innocent police officer, a young police officer, over the holidays, Mr. Speaker. And that story, unfortunately, is becoming less and less unique in this country. And it's not just in Toronto. And of course, folks from Toronto will know better than I that public transit is becoming less and less safe. In fact, increasingly so, women are concerned about riding the subway because people are being murdered. There's teenagers swarming people and stabbing them to death. People are being lit on fire. People are being assaulted and pushed to the ground. We just saw a CBC reporter assaulted and died four days earlier, an elderly woman, same thing in Toronto, just walking down the street, minding their own business, murdered. In Vancouver, Mr. Speaker, to speak nothing for the serious drug issues that that, that, that community is facing, People face down in the street overdosing. It's horrible. I think everyone agrees we need immediate action on that. We're also seeing terror inflicted on that community and on the most vulnerable communities and Vancouver at large by a very small group of people. In fact, last year, 40 people were responsible for being arrested 6,000 times. 40 people arrested 6,000 times. 
That's each of those 40 people being arrested 150 times in one calendar year. That's every two or three days, or sometimes multiple times a day. You talk to police, they say sometimes we're arresting the same person committing violent acts twice in one day. 40 people arrested 6,000. I just thought that was so astounding, that's why I keep repeating it. What kind of justice system do we have that 40 people can wreak havoc and commit 6,000 crimes in one year? The bail system is broken in this country, Mr. Speaker. And it's not just conservatives saying this. Conservatives have been saying we need bail reform for quite some time. But it's also a nonpartisan issue. It's also every single premier in Canada, all three premiers of the territories and all 10 premiers of the provinces, representing conservative, NDP, liberal premiers, nonpartisan issue. They signed a historic letter to the prime minister in the last couple of weeks demanding bail reform. You know how difficult it is to get every region of the country signing on to one letter and agreeing on a specific policy? It's pretty rare and very difficult. And they did this on their own volition. They came together, signed a letter, demanded bail reform from this prime minister. And you think that we would have heard the prime minister call a press conference, we're going to do something about this, every region of the country is concerned about it. Crickets. Nothing is happening on the liberal benches. Nothing. They've made no announcement, no commitment to bring in bail reform. All they've done when we've asked them questions in question period, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, the man tasked with the criminal code, he's responsible for that. He says, well, it's police and provinces. That's on police and provinces, blaming police and provinces for the issues in this country. And saying, oh, we're open to ideas. Well, there's an idea right here from the, from the premiers, every single premier in this country, in fact. And more ideas, if you'd like them, from the Toronto police, the epicenter of violent crime in this country. The Toronto police also penned a letter on their own to the Prime Minister of this country proposing three measures concerning bail. In fact, police associations across the country, municipal police forces, are saying bail reform will save lives. Bail reform will save lives. That's police. That's the frontline people putting their lives at risk for community safety that are the ones dealing with violent repeat offenders saying, we need bail reform and lives, Canadian lives will be saved. And the data tells us that as well. In fact, I recently heard from Chief Myron Demkew, the chief of the Toronto Police, who said there were 44 murders by shooting in Toronto last year. 44 innocent lives were taken by violent criminals using guns. 44. Of those 44, 24 of those murderers were out on bail. Were out on bail. If our bail system was a little bit tougher, on repeat violent offenders, 24 people would still be alive. So the data shows that the police are in fact correct. Bail reform would save lives, Mr. Speaker, and yet nothing from liberal benches. They're not taking this seriously. They're taking no responsibility and people are dying. I don't understand it. They are tasked with public safety. The Minister of Public Safety, I'll talk about this for a minute. The Minister of Public Safety spent the better part of January touring the country and talking to hunters about taking away their tools that they use, right? Because the Liberals are getting tough on guns, as they say. Gun control, right? Right. Duck hunters, farmers, sports shooters. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. He spent considerable time and resources going to talk to hunters about taking their firearms away. Meanwhile, police officers are being murdered in Toronto. People are being murdered on the subway. Why wasn't he touring our cities, our public safety minister of Canada, to talk to police about what they're facing on a daily basis? Where's the time and resources on that? This is a liberal government that's going to spend billions and billions of dollars coming after people like me, people uh, in these benches that have firearms legally and lawfully, that hunt and shoot and with our families. That's what they're focused on. That's what all the resources are being focused on in this liberal government when it comes to guns, for the most part. Meanwhile, people are being murdered by repeat violent offenders that continue to get bail. And that falls to the feet of the Liberal government. We can look at Bill C-75, a bail reform bill they brought forward a few years ago. You talk to police, all those change of policies that made it easier for repeat violent offenders to get bail, those are coming home to roost now, Mr. Speaker. That's what we're he hearing from frontline brave police officers in this country. We need to repeal the most harmful aspects of Bill C-75. That would be leadership from the Prime Minister.
get tough on crime, tough on the 40 people being arrested 6,000 times for violent crime in Vancouver. Ensuring that those 24 people next year, because the stats are about the same every year in Toronto, over half the, the shooting murders are from people that are out on bail. Let's save those lives next year. That could be done. That could be done in the next few months. That could be announced today from the Liberal government. And just to conclude, Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives have a tough on crime record. In fact, under Stephen Harper in the 10 years he was Prime Minister, violent crime or crime went down 26% in the 10 years that he was Prime Minister. 26%. They brought forward 80 criminal justice bills. It was a top priority for Stephen Harper. And since the eight years that this Liberal Prime Minister has been at the helm and in power in this country, violent crime reversed, went up 32%. There is a clear difference in approach to dealing with crime. And a Conservative government will be the ones to save lives in Canada, will be the ones to get tough on crime, Mr. Speaker, will be the ones to treat law-abiding citizens with respect, put victims' right first, and ensure that repeat violent offenders stay off our streets, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Questions and comments. Question and comment. The honourable member for Winnipeg North. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And you know, first and foremost, I would uh, say that uh, I don't believe the manipulation of stats. Uh, that uh, often are portrayed coming from the Conservative Party of Canada. If you listen to them, you would think that there was never any crimes when the Conservatives were in uh, power, uh, Mr. Speaker. They have this attitude of get tough on crime, and they know the, all the, the wonderful spin words, uh, Mr. Speaker. But my question to the member is because, you know, the Conservatives were in power. That's true. And they supported uh, bail, uh, bail, uh, uh, and probation officers in the important roles that probation officers and judicial independence at times plays in in society. At least they would give that Im image. My question to the member is: Is that does the member believe that our judicial judges uh, and the independence of the, of our uh, in, uh, judicial system, our probation system? is fundamentally flawed? Does that, is that what it is that the Conservative Party believes today? The Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul. Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the question from the member from Winnipeg. I don't know if he spent any time speaking with police, but my remarks are fueled by facts and police officers that I've spoken to in Winnipeg and across the country. And if he doesn't believe me, we can talk about Stats Canada. I do believe he believes in the institutions and the researchers and governments, so I'm going to assume he's going to take me at face value, but I'm happy to share this with him afterward. In the 10 years that Stephen Harper was the Prime Minister, there was a decrease of 25.86% in crime per capita. 26% decrease, that's statistical fact. In those same stats, you can see a 32% increase in violent crime since his leader has been Prime Minister. So those are the facts, Mr. Speaker. And I don't think the women who are concerned about riding public transit in Toronto, I don't think it's all in their head. I mean, perhaps he does. No. Nope. But the stats show they are more at risk today yeah. than eight years ago before this Liberal Prime Minister brought in all of his soft on crime policies and ensured that violent repeat offenders were let out on bail in our communities, yeah. Mr. Speaker. And we will stand up for them, yeah. unlike the Liberals. Yeah. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? L'honorable député de Rivière des the Honourable Member from Rivière des Milliers. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, I studied criminology, and the discussion that we had at the time would be, okay, should we be for or against bail? Uh, should we be tightening the laws, etc.? But the deeper we went into the criminology program, the more we started understanding that we had to rely on science and serious data. and the end of the studies, we understood that the really tough on crime approach that the Conservatives promote really doesn't lead to good results. Look at the US. The US is the country that has the strictest and most coercive tough on crime uh, agenda that exists, and they have a huge incarceration rate. They try to keep people in jail as long as possible. And coincidentally, the U.S. also has a very high and increasing rate of crime. So I'm wondering, what is my colleague 
basing herself on? What, what are the conservatives basing themselves on to when they argue that uh, tightening the rules against crime would lead to less violent crime? Same call. Points, uh, the member said a factually incorrect statement under Stephen Harper at the time. The day spent in prison from your average uh, uh, individual in prison went from 126 days to 105 days. So he's factually incorrect on that part. And I am disappointed in the Bloc Québécois, actually, because in Quebec, a woman was violently raped. She fought her rapist, violently raped by a man. Do you want to know how many days in prison that rapist got for violently raping that woman? Zero. Because of Bill C-5 from this Liberal government? Zero days. That Bloc Québécois party supported Bill C-5. Now her rapist will see zero days in prison because they allowed conditional sentencing for rapists, Mr. Speaker. He's going to serve his sentence for violently raping that woman from the comfort of his home. So I will take no lectures from that member about being tough on crime and the results that we're going to see. Resuming debate, reprise du débat, the honorable member for Fundy Royal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it's an honor to rise today on what is a, a very...